Hi, it's Jordan Teen One, and this is part one of how to make my Puppy Love Lumigurumi dog. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do this one on the left. I'm using purple and white. And in this first part, we're going to make the ears, the nose piece, and the paws with the hearts on, and then also the little tail. And then I have a separate video where I make the heart, and you can make that. It's optional, but I think it looks cute together. And this is the heart I've made in the other video. And then you can attach those so he's holding a heart. Now, if you wanted to do a regular color dog, like a brown or black and white or something like that, I have another example of that. So here's a cute little puppy that I made in the dark brown and the light brown, and these colors came out of the Rainbow Loom Camouflage Pack. So you can either leave him just plain, or you could make something else for him to hold. I have a little example of a bone that I came up with, and um, I don't have a tutorial for that yet, but you can certainly leave me a comment if you want to make this. And if I get a, enough feedback that somebody wants me to make it, I'll show you how to do that. And so you could just attach that, and I think that would be something cute as well. To make my dog, I'm going to be using some polyfill for the stuffing. I have a rainbow loom metal hook, but you can use a crochet hook or whatever you have available. I have a twist tie that I'm going to use to help me get the magic ring started. So that's optional, but I do find it very helpful. And then you're going to need something to mark your rows. So I have some stitch markers here. If you don't have those, you can just use the C clips or S clips or really anything on hand to mark the end of each row. I have these safety eyes. They are six millimeter that I'm going to be using for my eyes. So you could also make eyes out of rubber bands, or you could use some Google eyes. There's a lot of different options. And then as far as my band counts go, I used a total of 794 white, 320 purple, and two black. And that band count is actually for the entire dog. So it's all of the bands from the first video, as well as the second part of the video. I'm going to start by making the bottom of the foot, so it's going to take 11 bands. We're going to do a chain of four, and then we have two singles, three in the same, and then ending on two singles, and then that's where I'm going to put my stitch marker. So I'm going to start with a tripled band, so you just put it on your hook, twist, and loop it back on two times, so you'll have your three bands there, or three loops, and then we're just going to pull through our next band. I'm going to do a chain of four, so that's the third, and the fourth. And then I'm going to pull one end through the other, just very loosely, to make a slip knot or a slip stitch. And then what I'm going to do is work my way back over here to the left. So you want to make sure you keep this nice and smooth and straight, keep the same side facing you. I am going to go back through that same end chain here, so just move your hook to the front, front to back, push through. It's going to be our first single crochet and moving over to the left, the next chain. It's our second single. Now in the end you should have your tripled band. It is definitely a little tight. Make sure you go through all three loops. We're going to do three in this same. This is going to round out the front of the foot like the toe section. So just push back through all three my second, so one more time, and then working my way back, it's the opposite side of the chain here we're going through. We're doing two singles, that's going to get you back to the start, it's going to make like an oval shape, and it will curl up on you a little bit, you can just sort of straighten that out, it will lay flat eventually. Add your clip or your stitch marker, and that's the end of row one. 
We'll use 12 bands for row 2, so it's an increase, 2 singles, 2 increases, 2 singles, and then ending on that increase. So as we come around here, it's a little bit of a longer stretch. This is the heel part. We did have a slip stitch or a slip knot to start, so just make sure you're not going into this first part. The actual um, stitch is over here to the left. It's on the outer edge of the foot. So we're doing that increase. And then we have two singles. This is coming along the side of the foot. And now we're back up front here to the toe section. We're doing two increases. Just want to get that rounded out. Oops, got to make sure I get through under both loops there. So that was my first increase. And then my second. And now we're going to come back down the other side doing two singles and then last one here we're doing an increase so that's going to increase our stitch count to 12 Now before I continue to build the legs, I am going to add the little heart on the bottom of the paw. So for that I have three purple bands and then a white one to just tie it off. So what you're going to do is hold this so that your triple band here is at the top. That's the toe section. And you should see there's the three um, stitches that we had put that are going around it. And so below here there should be a hole in between the stitches on either side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go to the chain here right below that tripled band. I'm going to push my hook through that and I want to come up where that empty hole is. I'm going to go out to either side to sort of make a Y shape. So I think what I'm going to do just to kind of separate this out a little bit and it, it really is your preference but I'm going to actually grab one of these loops from this other stitch. I'm going to push up through. It's going to be kind of tight just to kind of make that separated. I was sort of messing around with it here off camera and I think it looks a little bit better like that. So I'm just going to pull through till it's about halfway, get it on my hook and then just kind of sort of snug but not real tight, pull one through the other. So now you have to make sure that that stays together and we're going to do the same thing for the other side. So I'm reaching up through this chain that's right below where that tripled band was. Again, I'm going to come up through this hole diagonally up to the right but I'm also going to just sort of snag one of these white loops Again, just so it stays a little bit more separated, pull down through about halfway and then one through the other. Again, just sort of a little bit snug of a slip knot just so it stays in place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up through. I'm going to go to this next chain. You can see it's a pretty big hole that would be below there. So it's two down from the tripled band push up through and I'm going to go through each of these loops. So I have the two on my hook. I'm going to take my third band and I'm going to carefully pull that down through. And then what I'm going to do is just find a space right below this. Again, I'm going to kind of come up in the middle of this stitch here just so it stays down and is nice and snug. It's kind of tight. And I'm going to grab the other side of this and pull it down through. You can see I'm sort of hung up on a white band here. There we go. So you can play around with how you think it looks. 
That's how the heart's going to look. Of course, I got hung up on my stitch marker there. So I have these two purple bands on my hook. I'm going to take this additional band, with whatever color your main foot is here. So I have white. And I'm just going to make a really nice and tight slip knot so that doesn't come apart. And if you wanted to, you could tuck that loose band in. You're not going to see it because it's inside, but it might get in your way. So I'm just going to stick that under. So this is going to be the bottom of the foot. And I think I'm going to pull this a little bit tighter. And you can play around. And so it should resemble a little heart. In row three, we're doing just one single crochet into each stitch, so you'll need 12 bands. So I'll let you do that on your own. You can pause, and I'll see you back here in a minute. In row four, you're going to need nine bands, so we are going to do three decreases. We're starting with two single crochet. And then we're going to do three decreases in a row. So the way I do decreases is I skip the first stitch of the decrease, go into the second stitch. I'm just going to work in the two outer loops. So I'm pushing through from the middle on out. And then I'm going to carefully just pull back and then just slip my hook right through that first outer loop that we had skipped. I found that this is the easiest way to decrease and the most seamless in my opinion. So now we're going to do another decrease so we're skipping the next stitch, going to the next outer loop, pull back and through that first outer loop and we're going to do one more so skip, outer loop, next outer loop and throw. And then that's going to leave us with four stitches. And they're all going to be singles. So here's our last one. And you can kind of be shaping the foot as you're doing this. It should start to look like a little booty. And I think after I do the next one, I will put a little bit of stuffing in. You'll need seven bands for row five, so we're doing two more decreases. So we have one single. And then we have two more decreases, so skip. Just really trying to narrow this. And then another decrease. And then we're going to be left with a stitch count of seven when we're done this. We have four more singles. Again, make sure you're going over to that next one. And seven is going to be the stitch count for the rest of the leg. So that's two, three, and four. And as I said, before I continue to build this leg, I think I am going to add a little bit of stuffing. So you can go ahead and do that to yours as well. In rows six through eight, we're going to do one single crochet into each stitch. So you'll need seven bands for each. So I'll let you do that on your own. You can pause and I'll see you back here in a minute. When you're finished your leg, you will need to stuff the rest of it and it is pretty skinny. So what I like to do is just to get a very little bit of the fluff and kind of ball it up a little bit, stick it on the top, and then I'd like to take a pen or something that's long and skinny and then just carefully put
push that down in. I found that's what works the best. Now you don't want to overstuff it, but you do want it to be relatively solid. And try not to have too much of the bits and pieces sticking out because then it's hard when you go to attach it. So when you have the one leg done, you're going to go ahead and make three more of these. So I'm not going to film this, but I will add the time to go back to if you feel like you want to follow along with the steps once again. The ear begins with a magic ring of six, so for that I have seven rubber bands. So I'm going to take my twist tie and put it right next to my hook. I'm going to triple the first band, so just twist and loop it back on two times. Slide my twist tie up, and that'll just keep those three loops together and give me something to hold on to. And that leaves six bands. They're going to get pulled through, back on, and one through the other and then just keep pushing back through from the front. So that's two, three, four, five, and let me just take this out. I have one more. Add my stitch marker and then you just want to spread these around just to make sure they're nice and evenly spaced around that circle. In row two we'll use eight bands. It's an increase followed by two singles and then repeat. So we're doing an increase in the first stitch And then we have two singles, and then we're going to repeat with another increase, and where we do the increases is going to be like the sides of the ear. It's going to lay a little bit more flat there, and then I have two singles. Let me just move that clip. So our stitch count has increased by two this time, so if you were to count your stitches, you should have eight. In row three, we're going to do two more increases, so you'll need ten bands. Again, we're starting with an increase. It's going to line up with the previous increase in the last row. And then this time we're going to do three singles. There's one, two, three, and then another increase. Again, it's going to line up with the previous one. And then that's going to leave you with three singles. sure you go under both loops. I think you only got under one there. And then as I said where the increases are that's going to be the sides. So if you want you can just sort of open this up and squeeze that flat. That's the way the ear is going to lay. In rows four through seven we're doing one single crochet into each stitch so you're going to need ten bands for each row. I'm going to go ahead and let you do those on your own so you can pause and I will see you back here soon. You'll need eight bands for row eight and we are going to start to narrow this so we have two decreases. So here's what your ear should look like. Again, where we had done those increases, that's where we want the ear to lay nice and flat. So if yours started to look a little twisted, just find those um, increases there and flatten it out. It should lay nice and flat for you. 
So we're going to do our two singles. And then we are going to do a decrease. So it should basically line up with that side section. You should have your two stitches. So again, we're skipping the first one and just working in those outer loops. It's our first decrease. And then we're going to do um, three singles coming up along the side. Let me just see here. Make sure I'm going in the right one. So that's one, two, three, and then we should be along the other side here. Again, outer loops. It does sort of want to close in on you. If you feel like you need to, you can open this up so you can get a better view of where you need to go. It's our decrease. Again, that should be along the other side. And then that's one more single. Row 9 is another row of single crochet, so you should have 8 bands. You can go ahead and do that, and I will see you back here in a minute. You'll need 6 bands for row 10. This is going to be our last row for the ear and we're doing two decreases. So again you may need to kind of open this up to get a better view of your stitches. We're doing a decrease to begin. And then we have two singles. And then we have our second decrease. and then two more singles. And again, just try and make that nice and flat and smooth. And you should have a nice ear shape. So you're going to go ahead and make a second ear I am not going to film this, but again, I'm going to add the time to go back to if you want to follow along with the instructions again. For the nose section, I'm going to show you it all at once. I'm going to be doing all three rows, and I'll be using a total of 22 white and 3 purple. So I'm going to start with a magic ring of 3. And since I want the nose to look like a heart, I'm going to be using a different color for my center of the magic ring. I'm going to be using the white. If you wanted your nose to be all one color, you would make your center purple. So I'm going to triple this. And slide this up. So here's one, two, and three. So three is a very small magic ring, and you can see they're all going to want to sit to one side, about half of it. So what you need to do is try your best to spread this out so that they're evenly spaced. And let me just grab my stitch marker so I can mark that. And now in the next stitch over, and again, it's going to be spread far apart, so you have to really pay attention here. It's a little bit of a longer stretch, but you can see across here is my first stitch. I'm going to be doing three in the same stitch. So I am going to do a slip stitch since I'm changing colors. If you weren't changing colors, you wouldn't have to do that. So that's the second. And then back through one more time. So that was three in that stitch. Over to the next stitch, I'm doing just a regular increase with two bands. And 
and then over to where my stitch marker is. I'm doing another set of three in that last stitch. Let me just take this out. So that's the second one. And the third. So you can see what it looks like. Where we did the increase, the regular increase with just two bands, that's going to be the top. And it should look sort of like a heart shape with your three bands, if that's what you're making. And now in the third row, we're going to do an increase. And we had done that slip stitch, so just make sure you're going under the right section there. So our increases in this row are all just going to be regular increases of two. And then we're going to do another increase in the next stitch. And then just a single in the next. And then an increase. and then a single, an increase, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's extremely windy here today, another increase, and then finally back at the start we have a single. So here's what your little nose section should look like. To make the tail we're going to need five purple, it's going to be a magic ring of four, and then you're going to need 16 white, and that's just going to be four rows of single crochet. So I'm going to triple my first band. And four is kind of a small magic ring, so it's definitely going to be smaller than you might be used to. So we have one, two, three, four, and then we're going to spread these around. Again, just like when you did the nose part with the magic ring of three, it's they don't really want to make it quite all the way around. Use your clipper stitch marker, and then it's just a matter of doing the four rows of singles. So I'm going to do a slip stitch since I'm changing color. find that the larger magic rings actually seem to be easier to work with because when you have just four or this little bit it seems so tiny so there's my last band in that first row and then just be careful of that slip stitch make sure you're going into the actual stitch Start our second row. You can see what I mean here how the circle is like really small and closed off when you have such a small piece that you're working with. That was row two. And you might have to just take a second and really open up these stitches to see where you need to go. Here's our third.
And then we're going to have one more row. Again, it really wants to close in here on me. And then our last one here. This is the end of part one. So you can go ahead and continue to part two. I'll add the link so you can learn how to finish making your cute little dogs. I'll also add the link to the heart once again so you can learn how to make that as well. I hope that everyone really loves and adores their new little puppy dogs. You can always leave me comments on YouTube and Facebook. You can post pictures of your creations to my Facebook page. And please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that way you can stay updated when I have new tutorials available. You can also find me on Pinterest and Instagram. So you can post your pictures on Instagram too. And don't forget to tag me. Thanks for watching.